Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Panzer Corps. This is the part two of my look at the 2017 Multiplayer Championship, and uh, this is my first round match against Bluefin. Uh, so I am in the process of playing through uh, round one, which occurred in early June, and looked at the uh, Battle of the Bakhage scenario, which basically pit uh, American forces against German forces as the Americans attempt to break out of the Bakage around Normandy and the Germans attempt to stop them. Now, this particular scenario, we're six turns in and playing as the Americans already, you can see that uh, armor does not do very well on the defensive in the Bakage. You can see there my armor actually just did very well against a German infantry unit. However, I was attacking from an open field, which is very rare in this particular battle. Again, this last attack that you just saw in front of you again, Again, right there was another uh, attack uh, through an open field. And the reason I bring that up is because this is, again, a scenario where you're almost all in hedge road or bockage in almost every single um, battle, which means if the enemy infantry finds your armor in this rough terrain, your armor is going to be a sitting duck. Uh, if they, on the other hand, uh, you know, are attacked by you and you're in, in better terrain, you can do better. But at the end of the day, it seems the offensive for the tank is far better than the defensive in this scenario. In general, it seems to be true for tanks in Panzer Corps. Uh, but it's really a very strong infantry map. And you'll see throughout this battle, German infantry doing a very good job of dealing with armor. Uh, again, my infantry helped to take out a Tiger tank in the last, uh, in the last uh, video. Uh, so we were able to uh, have success with our own vessels as well. I think one of my one of my challenges in this particular fight was relying perhaps too heavily on uh, armor and building too much in the way of armor when I should have been focusing more on the construction of infantry units, again, because of the terrain. That's one of those things that I think I don't do a very good job of in the scenarios as I play through, but I think in general, uh, different scenarios have different uh, ideal makeups for the forces involved, and I think I could do a better job of that there. So you see, by the way, I launched an attack with my infantry first against this enemy armor unit. Uh, it weakened it up for my tank killers, but I wasn't going to get a very good return with the tank killers, so again, I launched the attack with the infantry first, followed it up with the, uh, the tank killer unit, I believe that was a Hellcat. Uh, meanwhile, I've taken part of Khan. I haven't taken all of it, some British forces. This is not an objective off here to the side. This is actually just a kind of side objective. I'm attacking here mainly to secure my flank because if the Germans, if I didn't uh, commit forces to Khan, then they've got a bridge right over this river here, which would allow them to move into my rear and threaten my own objective spots. So I need to keep the Germans on the right occupied so I can advance on the left and on the center. And in this particular fight, that's why I commit forces to the attack on Khan. Uh, I do a good job in tying Germans up, but I perhaps overcommit too many forces myself uh, to the attack. Uh, meanwhile, you can see here last turn I purchased some new units. I was just moving some of that armor down, uh, and I also need to go ahead and reinforce some of my air units because the Germans spent a lot of money on two very high-quality Focke-Wulf 190s, uh, which, are, uh, which did a good job in, I believe they destroyed one of my air units. They also chewed up some of my other air units, and the Germans also have quite a bit of flak in this particular scenario, so they're able to more effectively... Uh, resist. There you can see an enemy flak battery just took out half almost of my bomber formation and it prevented my bombers from being able to drop their weapons on that enemy uh, artillery piece because the attack was broken up. Um, the uh, one thing I kind of feel like in Panzer Corps that may be overstrengthed is enemy aircraft and enemy anti-aircraft weaponry. Um, enemy fighters might be understrength, uh, but in general it seems like flak uh, for both sides uh, can render a uh, map unusable for air units, where it's basically suicide for your air units to operate anywhere. So the first thing you kind of have to do is take out the enemy artillery, because every single time you attack an enemy unit, if they have artillery, and that artillery is, is close to that uh, unit, if it's within range, that artillery will fire defensive fire that will break up your attack, inflict casualties, uh, disrupt your attack so you're not, you don't have the strong cohesion, which makes your attack less effective. That makes sense to me. But the other thing that you need to really look at is destroying enemy anti-aircraft guns. And the reason you need to look at destroying enemy anti-aircraft guns is because if you try and bomb an enemy unit and they have flak nearby, you are going to get butchered. Not only that, but the enemy will then attack you between turns when it's their turn with enemy anti-aircraft fire, which will, again, butcher you. Which, 
I'm more okay with the anti-aircraft fire attacking me when I'm just kind of sitting in place and then kind of acting as a, an area defense. But one thing I think it just does too good of a job, too effective of a job for tactical aircraft is really breaking up uh, the attacks of those aircraft. Uh, it's not like the German Stukas in World War II uh, were diving down on, on enemy forces where there was never a chance of flak. It's not like the American tactical bombers were attacking where there was never a chance of flak. And while it is true that American tactical aircraft were uh, suffered heavily. In many cases, tactical units suffered 50% casualties, and a lot of this was to ground fire. It didn't prevent them from being able to launch attacks on enemy ground units. You know, they still were able to accomplish quite a bit in the destruction of enemy ground units, whereas in this game, it kind of butchers your aircraft, but then it also prevents it from being effective in any way. I feel like any aircraft is maybe a little bit overpowered in the Panzer Corps in general. Uh, you know, it, 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 both denies you an area to attack, but in addition to doing that, it also makes you, uh, you know, bleed to death, which I, I kind of think maybe one or the other, I think it should be a little bit less, uh, less effective at, at stopping attacks. And, uh, you know, it could, it could maintain its, its lethality, I guess, would, would make it a more interesting game rather than having ak guns basically shut down of the map, and you'll see that in my round two match as well, where I really kind of struggled with how to balance and how to deal uh, with. Uh, so in that case, uh, map battle two was was dealing with Soviet anti-aircraft guns uh, during the initial attacks on Russia. It's the summer offensive scenario, so the German invasion of Russia uh, is round two. But we are still on round one, and we've moved on to turn seven, where again I'm continuing my drive south. Uh, I believe if we if we look at this particular fight, I think there's four objectives I have to take and hold for a minor victory. Uh, there are six or so total objectives. The enemy has to launch a successful counterattack and take back everything from me for them to, to win a major victory or just prevent me from taking those uh, those four objectives uh, to win a minor victory. The, the major victory seems very unlikely for the Germans in this particular scenario, but a minor victory, if they hold me up long enough, is definitely possible. You can see here we've taken one objective here on the left, but there's two more kind of in the center and, and the left that I need to penetrate down to there's an additional objective here on the right uh, that I need to take. Uh, but then I've also got a whole bunch of troops that are tied up uh, dealing with Khan as well. Uh, and we've kind of pushed the enemy back. We've taken, you know, one of these hexes in and around Khan, but we haven't uh, haven't done much more than that. Additionally, this British unit of mine is, is pretty battered. Uh, and I'm trying to, uh, you know, deal with these, these threats to Khan itself. So I do have three infantry units that are committed here that probably shouldn't be, uh, but I'm trying to reduce the German infantry uh, in the parallel Khan hex. And then that way, if I can reduce the infantry, and the anti-aircraft fire, then I can move down the right side of the river uh, and attack uh, this enemy objective uh, to the south from two points, both from the right and from the left. Now, the right, they do have pillboxes that stand between me and my objective, but those pillboxes are actually uh, only at half strength. They're at five uh, hit points or five uh, strength, uh, which makes them, in my view, substantially less of a threat than they otherwise could be. So again, we're wrapping up turn seven here as we kind of maneuver some forces in position. I'm trying to keep a little bit of ways away from the enemy uh, infantry with my armor. I'm not really staying very far away, but I'm trying to avoid being in an adjacent hex. My hope is that he won't be aggressive and move forward to attack me, but if he does... By doing so, he'll dislocate himself out of strong defensive positions and towns and Bakish so that a counterattack will be more, you know, easily uh, accomplishable. So that's kind of what I'm trying. You can see here he here's launched a counterattack himself, sort, sort of this uh, right objective. He just destroyed my anti-tank unit uh, and doesn't look like I actually have much infantry in the way of his counterattack. So I'm really exposed on my left, his right, uh, right side of the map. And he's launching some other counterattacks here uh, on the left as well. All, overall, it's a very aggressive uh, turn that he's launching here, or as it appears to be. He just destroyed uh, one of my troops, pushed another back on the right, uh, and he's got some anti-aircraft guns as well that are hitting some of my aircraft that I brought in. I did bring my fighters over last turn to try and shoot down his uh, aircraft and regain air superiority, uh, but uh, that's kind of where we're standing right now. I don't have any infantry uh, between me me in this objective point. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try and purchase anything to, to start on top of that, but obviously you can see here I can't. Uh, I don't have the ability to just drop an infantry unit in. Uh, 
in one turn. My artillery over here is out of ammunition, but again, a couple of hexes away through rough terrain, uh, you know, maybe he won't counterattack me. Uh, meanwhile, I've got this one infantry guy here across the river that's in really rough shape. I've got a couple of other infantry units that I'm trying to finish off this uh, this German anti-aircraft unit here in the northern hex of Khan, uh, with, while as well, uh, there's some enemy artillery I'd like to finish off as well, but that doesn't appear uh, to be the case here. I just barely finished off that anti-aircraft, went ahead and captured the other city hex, and now I'm kind of pulling my artillery back out a little bit to gain a little bit of cover. Uh, salvaging the situation on the right flank a little bit in that we just took the remainder of Khan and have probably freed up some infantry units as well as buying some new ones there, uh, but not so much so that we would be able to stem the tide and keep that objective uh, safe. Um, let's see here. We've got this armor unit that's really badly damaged. We've also got some enemy infantry and some towns. Um... My uh, my aircraft are kind of exposed to that enemy flak unit there, so I'll pull them back a little bit and bombard this town. I don't have... I mean, I could launch a, an attack with my own infantry. Let's maybe soften them up a bit more with some artillery here. All right, so you can see that they're, they've now got that little red icon next to the number 7, which means they're suppressed. You can see as we attack, it went from a 4-4 four to four, uh, prediction to a 1-4, uh, to four, uh, which, again, gives me a big advantage. I can now use my armor to finish off what's left. This is a 76-millimeter Sherman, uh, and we just went ahead and destroyed that enemy infantry unit. So, again, using the infantry to set up the attack for uh, the armor uh, worked pretty well there. i got to pull this uh, Sherman uh, 105 back. It's an artillery-based Sherman, as you've kind of seen. It's out of ammunition, so we don't want it exposed. If the enemy attacks it, he won't be able to shoot back. Meanwhile, using our infantry to finish off this enemy anti-aircraft gun and continuing to advance here, now that we're on to turn 8, continuing to advance uh, southwards with both my infantry and, to a lesser degree, my armor. Um, again, there's, there's risk in exposing my armor to enemy infantry, but if I can put it in hexes where it's adjacent to enemy vehicles or anti-aircraft guns, I'll be in better shape, as you could just see there with the destruction I just wrought on that enemy uh, self-propelled artillery unit. Uh, meanwhile, enemy flak 88s are, I'm bombarding them and uh, hopefully finish them off here with infantry, and I do. So I think kind of by this point here, you can see we just destroyed that enemy anti-aircraft gun. So both enemy anti-aircraft guns are now gone. I can swoop my fighters in here to finish off this enemy Focke Wolf 190, and uh, they've got one more left, but we're at almost parity. The P-47 and the uh, Focke Wolf are at four and three, the slight edge to us. And uh, I believe the P-47 has slightly better stats in the game. So uh, already the advantage to us in terms of hit points, also in terms of performance. So on the left side of the map, things are seem to be going well. I feel like we've kind of broken through the enemy on the left. And uh, here around turn 8, uh, the left side of the map is secure. The right side of the map, very much the opposite. Um, we can see here the enemy has strong forces on the right that just counterattacked and destroyed a somewhat weak and probing force that I was sending down the right flank. Uh, now I need to get some troops in between them and some of the objectives here on the right because, again, they could easily prevent me from uh, you know, winning this, this fight if they take this objective back here or get in around us. Uh, and, and then maybe reinforce their own left uh, if they can overwhelm us on the right. They do have quite a few infantry that they'll still have to go in uh, past around Khan, so I'll just kind of build that one infantry unit in that objective, keep that secure, and I think I'll be in much better shape. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and do some reinforcing across the board, um, where I can anyway. And I think that'll probably just about do it for the turn here. I don't think I have anything else to move. Yeah, it doesn't really look like it. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and move on to turn nine. So we've started with turn six, fought through that, fought through turn seven, and now we're uh, through turn eight, uh, moving on to turn nine. So we're a little bit more, we're actually at the halfway point now in this particular battle of a maximum of 17 turns. And uh, you can see here he's launching his own counterattacks, trying to finish off our uh, our armor here. That attack wasn't as successful. Uh, three and three, I'd, I'd take that every day. Uh, meanwhile, the other infantry unit moved forward and finished our armor off. But at the end of the day, we, we inflicted equal casualties on them uh, as they on us. Uh, which in this particular scenario, armored infantry, uh, I believe that's a, a very healthy exchange rate. 
Uh, meanwhile, the enemy's strong counterattack on the right flank continues. As you can see here, he's bringing in uh, substantially stronger forces. He's retaken the objective point, and uh, now I'm going to have to start pulling forces away from my attempt to flank uh, down the east side. Uh, toward uh, toward the objective in the south to kind of stem the advance here in toward the the right and center of the map. Uh, if I were to just move down the right flank, then I would I'd risk leaving uh, my center and, and right. My I suppose technically it's my left because I'm facing down, but I guess the right side of the screen to you. I would risk exposing that right and center uh, to enemy counterattack here. This artillery battery is damn resilient. I can't finish him off. It's just, you know, oh, you almost got him. Oh, you almost got him. Oh, you almost got him. And there you go. The infantry fails to destroy him yet again as he uh, kind of retreats uh, southward. Uh, meanwhile, he shifted this uh, 88 battery down to facing horizontal, so it's not being used as an anti-aircraft battery. It's being used as a um, enemy um, um, anti-tank gun, uh, which makes it better against infantry, but it can't shoot down my aircraft when he's in that position. And the slow attrition of air combat here continues. The enemy's down to two strength on his fighters, but we're at three. So again, uh, neither of our forces are in good shape. And uh, we're just kind of continue to try and wear him down on the right. I've got to go ahead and waste a turn for that unit uh, to give him uh, some more ammo because he's out. Uh, but we'll continue kind of using our artillery. I think one thing that's really allowed us to be successful on the left, in addition to just the greater preponderance of forces that we've brought to bear on the left, is we've also had substantial artillery uh, reserves. We've got uh, Sherman 105, uh, and then we've got a, a pair of, uh, I think, 105 millimeter howitzers as well, uh, which is, is really allowing us to be more successful than we otherwise would. Um, let's see here. We could finish off these Germans, or we could advance south. We got a 6-1 to one there, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so we just seriously crippled this enemy infantry, and it will roll the armor down the road and uh, finish them off to destroy them. There you go. And, uh, you know, now we've got, got that enemy unit destroyed. We can move our infantry south here uh, to destroy this infantry unit, which we didn't quite do. Uh, and they actually did a lot more damage to us than I had hoped. Um, finish off that enemy assault gun here. And maybe we've got some aircraft that we can bomb this unit and destroy it. It doesn't predict it. It's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, it didn't do anything. I don't think I can finish him off. I don't think I have anything else that can take him on. Doesn't look like it. Damn. All right, so he'll survive, but we did destroy two enemy units there on the left, further weakening them. Uh, I've got to go ahead and use this turn to replenish the ammo on that British heavy artillery piece. And uh, I've moved some, I believe I've moved some infantry? That's our heavy infantry right there, yep, uh, to, to counter the enemy thrust here on the right. Uh, continue using some of our prestige to uh, bring in more troops in and around the Khan area, uh, or, or a little bit north maybe. We'll see here. Um, yeah, we'll put... Eh, we'll put it on the right, over by Khan. So we'll kind of keep counterattacking this enemy, uh, this enemy force here, uh, just keeping us strong enough to, again to keep them a little bit busy here. Uh, meanwhile, I think we've moved everything else uh, for this particular turn. I'm just kind of double checking as I kind of click around the map to see if there's anything that we're missing. I don't think there is. Um, so to me, it really feels like this battle has turned, and it's just going to be a matter of whether we can get to enough objectives in enough time. Again, we've really beaten them on the left. Once we take these two objective points here on the left, then we'll swing around to the center to take that central objective point. And then it doesn't really matter if we get those objectives on the right. Uh, we just have to make sure they don't swing in behind us and take this sort of central objective where those fighter aircraft are up near the top of the map. If they were to sneak in there, that could endanger our ability to uh, win a victory. But again, these three objectives on the left, the lower left and center, are the key areas that I'd like to take. I doubt a, a total victory is, is attainable with only eight more turns to go, uh, but we'll see here. Again, we're now on turn nine, watching his uh, his actions this turn here. You can see uh, both artillery bombardments and 88mm uh, attacks. And his infantry just launched a devastating attack against our heavy infantry, uh, and uh, that unit is dead. So um, that was uh, unfortunate. We didn't have any counter-battery fire or anything like that. And he's got some anti-aircraft guns as well, so any uh, air attempt to bring air forces in and, and play a decisive role there will be difficult. Uh, I'll move my artillery forward so at least I can... Uh, you know, play somewhat of a role in, in containing him. We'll bombard them. We'll see if this heavy infantry unit that I just bought can maybe uh, 
do something. So you can see here we lost one, but inflicted four if you combine the one uh, HP from the bombardment and the uh, and the infantry attack there. Uh, so weaken them a bit. Our, uh, our one HP infantry still failing to destroy that enemy artillery battery, but we are driving them, I suppose. Um, oh, God. All right. Keep losing troops that I can't afford to lose. And there you go, another failed attempt to finish off this enemy unit. This this 88 and this artillery over here just won't die. Um, apparently, my bomber can't destroy it either. So, uh, and next turn, that infantry is going to be out of ammo. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll pull these pi or that pioneers or heavy infantry back uh, to kind of reinforce again, because we're still kind of weak there on the right if the enemy does have the ability to launch any kind of attacks. I want to use this infantry and advance south, but I'm also kind of nervous about the enemy trying to sneak in behind me. So we'll uh, give it another turn. Meanwhile, uh, finally finished off the enemy air force here um, with, uh, with our own, just barely surviving, uh, but we did finish them off there. Um, just trying to decide if I want to go after the enemy units here or if I want to start taking these hexes because I do got I have an objective point that our tanks are adjacent to that is open that we could take but I may want to save that movement point uh, those movement points for um, moving in and destroying the enemy infantry that remains on the flip side if the enemy does get prestige you can raise new units in these if I'm not adjacent to them then it may make uh, this more difficult if he plops reinforcements in here the nice thing is my understanding is the game does not allow you to uh, raise an infantry in a hex that is adjacent to an enemy hex uh, so in that case most of these objectives should be relatively safe as I uh, continue my mopping up operations here against the greatly weakened enemy forces to the south. Additionally, you get prestige for doing things like taking enemy cities, uh, but at the moment, uh, the enemy is uh, not uh, not really able to um, uh, reinforce himself because he's not destroying or taking uh, our cities. That means his, his prestige is uh, not fixed, but but uh, you know he doesn't have a lot of uh, prestige that he's gaining every turn, and what little he has is probably being chewed up uh, by reinforcing the units that he does have. You can see here that the enemy uh, doesn't appear to have troops in these hexes. I moved a couple tanks adjacent to those objectives because I was trying to make sure that I didn't you know stumble into an ambush. If you just kind of drive toward an objective and, and go into it, you, you have a, a limit on how far you can see. There's a line of sight limit on how far before your troops you can see, but you can click and move beyond on that sometimes. So there are cases where you don't see an enemy, you order to move four or five hexes because you can't see four or five hexes, and then your troops basically just drive down the road into enemy anti-tank guns or, or what have you into an ambush and suffer heavy heavy losses without really shooting back at all either. Um, this should about do this turn. Let me pull this infantry back here. Uh, we've got that uh, air unit that's uh, reinforced. We just took several enemy cities, which you can see here now we have over nine or over 460 prestige. So if we want to buy more armor or more infantry, uh, we can do that. I'm going to start repositioning my artillery for an attack against this other enemy objective here to the east. Now that I've really overrun them here in, in the west, and it's just a matter of mopping up and, and putting hexes, putting, putting troops on those hexes for those towns, I'm going to start shifting my forces east because I do need to swing east uh, to try and uh, take some more of these objectives and also deal uh, with this enemy threat here on the far right or far eastern portion of the map. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this prestige that I've uh, that I've earned from all of these cities that I've taken to help reinforce these troops on the right side of the map to make sure that the enemy force here does not, uh, you know, overwhelm us and and deal us a, deal us a blow. Um, so I think maybe should we do some armor? I'm just trying to see what has the best uh, soft attack or soft defense because we are facing a lot of enemy infantry. And, you know, if you have a good soft attack, that's basically enemy infantry is soft. And defense is, is against uh, infantry as well if you're talking a soft defense. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of comparing how uh, some of my infantry uh, compare to uh, some of my um, armor units to see what would be the better investment. Infantry in general is cheaper, and I'm not looking to move too rapidly, so I could save a little bit of money um, by not investing in, in uh, transports and just let them move on foot. Or I could purchase the armor, which is a little bit more expensive, but is more effective depending on the particular mission. So 
armor can do a better job against enemy armor itself, obviously, but it also can kind of do a decent job against infantry, so it's kind of more of a general purpose weapon. And you've got a whole bunch of different options here between, like, the Sherman Crab, which kind of has an anti-mine layer device in front, the 76mm uh, Sherman, which is better against armor, and then kind of the, the W76, which is the up-armored version uh, that also... Uh, has a 76 millimeter gun, has better armor, better gun. Um, not quite as good against infantry, though. I went with the with my armor just because I've seen a couple enemy vehicles as well. So if I do engage enemy vehicles, the Sherman will be better against them while still hopefully being respectful against the infantry, although that does kind of fly in the face of some of the things uh, that I've seen in this particular fight where, where armor is at quite a disadvantage against enemy infantry. Uh, we're probably moving into here the last turn that we'll cover in this video. Uh, we're into enemy turn three. You can see him. He's decided to attack my uh, artillery uh, and, uh, you know, probably in an attempt to break up uh, or prevent my counter battery fire against this uh, infantry attack he just launched, which failed disastrously. You could see my artillery launched a counter battery fire as he launched this attack on this number, this nine HP uh, heavy infantry. Uh, but the end result was four casualties from my artillery, four casualties from my infantry, and no losses for my troops. Uh, so that was a very successful uh, defense on my part. Meanwhile, you can see here I'm pulling my artillery back, so I'm distanced a bit to prevent any more direct attacks on the artillery. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull my infantry off the road here into this hedgerow so I can have some room to move my armor forward. Meanwhile, I'll launch an infantry attack against a couple of his depleted infantry units here. You can see one only had an HP of three. I finished him off with that heavy infantry of mine. And I kind of rolled my, my Sherman forward to finish off this enemy infantry unit, although it didn't quite work as I had hoped. Uh, you can see here we inflicted a casualty, but the enemy unit did not get destroyed. Uh, so not quite what I was hoping for. Uh, but still, uh, you know, pushed him back, and uh, it, it, what few prestige points he probably has left, I'm sure he will end up needing to use to try and replenish them. If uh, my uh, my bombing raid here, if I move it over, well, it has a zero expect expectation of success, so maybe it doesn't make sense uh, to bomb it. Uh, maybe better off to bomb the enemy... Um, enemy anti-aircraft, but all in all, I don't want to lose the unit, so I'll just pull it out and then kind of use my other bomber, which is at full strength to finish the infantry off, which I did. It's now destroyed, and you can see here the enemy has some Nubervefer rocket artillery as well as some other vehicles, so I think the armor decision, assuming we're able to survive what I assume will be some infantry counterattacks, uh, was probably a good decision. Meanwhile, on the left side of the map, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take what's left of uh, these objectives here. Uh, we'll get a whole bunch of prestige for that, and then we're going to, again, continue the move east uh, with both our armor and our uh, and our artillery so that we can take this objective point here. Remember, the, the flags with the golden or uh, yellowish uh, kind of brackets around it are the... Um, are the objective points. So you can see it's kind of yellowish gold around it. That means it is your objective for the mission, and we're kind of maneuvering our artillery and our infantry into position to, to attack it. Really, the infantry, most of my units were used up taking these cities, uh, but our artillery is definitely in position in addition to one infantry unit that we moved forward on, uh, on trucks. Uh, and uh, we'll kind of move some more artillery here uh, to get into position. It. If we do move it into trucks, they can't fire. They can't launch counter-battery fire. But on the flip side, they can move much further. So it's kind of a, a toss-up on, on what you're trying to do here. Um, with that being said, guys, this is we're closing in on the end of this particular video. We're 11 turns in. I would say uh, we're in very good shape to win a minor victory. We're highly unlikely to win a major victory, but we'll continue chugging along. We've got six more turns to try and overrun the Germans. Uh, they're pr pr proving some stiff uh, opponents here on the right side of the map with the left side of the map completely conquered. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'm going to go ahead and jump out in just a moment. Let me know your thoughts below. This is part two of a three-part look at the first round of the 2017 Multiplayer Championship for Panzer Corps, which I don't think I said at the beginning of the video is a uh, Panzer General-inspired game made by the Lord's Game Studio and published by Slytherin and Matrix Games. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump out, as I've already said, so thanks for watching. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.